toasty. <laughs> You're so vocal. Oh, hi, Lucas. Oh, Lucas, no, me, no, me. Lucas, no, me. Hi everyone, I'm back home in Boston now and before we continue, I would like to introduce our sponsor for today which is HelloFresh. If you don't already know, HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. They deliver fresh pre-portioned ingredients right to your doorstep and I'm so excited to be working with them again. As someone who frequently struggles with low moods and finding the motivation to get out of bed and cook myself a meal, HelloFresh has been such a big help for me this week in taking care of my body. They've prepared some amazing seasonal flavors for me to try and here you can see me cooking their black bean and poblano pepper quesadilla which i've never cooked before if you're like me i sometimes find myself stuck in these recipe ruts where i cook the same meals over and over again but with hellofresh i was able to try out delicious new recipes that i've never tried they offer a variety of dietary options like pescatarian vegetarian and they also offer family friendly meals so i was able to choose everything that i wanted to try this week everything i've made with hellofresh has been so delicious so far it's very quick and easy it never takes me more than 20 to 30 minutes to prepare a meal it has definitely saved me the stress of grocery shopping and meal planning and what i love most about hellofresh is that they promote the use of sustainable packaging and their pre-portioned ingredients helps decrease the amount of food waste in your household as well so today you can go to hellofresh.com slash made by malin 14 and use the code made by malin 14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts thank you again to Hello Fresh for sponsoring this video and happy eating to everyone. Oh, thank you. Mm. Mm. I like it. It's good. It's so good. It's good. Grocery shopping! Our apartment has been super dry and my skin is actually like peeling off on my forehead and nose so if, if you can see that I'm sorry. So I'm about to go to H Mart for some grocery shopping and yesterday I was catching up with the BTS in the soup episodes and in episode 3 Jungkook and Yoongi were making um, suyuk which is like some 
braised pork belly stew type thing. So I'm gonna grab pork belly, veggies, and probably some Korean snacks. I'm not sure yet. I'm just gonna look around. I have little flowers on my skirt. Such nice families. It is Monday today, November 8th, I think, and I just woke up around 30 minutes ago. I was thinking a lot about how much I missed working. Like, I just miss having a schedule and being active and kind of having plans for what I'm gonna do every day of the week. And these days, I've been trying really hard to create some sort of routine for myself, but I find that it's difficult for me to commit to one when there's no like external pressure so a few days ago i found this journal on amazon and this isn't sponsored i just wanted to show you this journal that i bought it's called the five minute journal and it's sort of like a gratitude journal where every morning when you wake up and every night before you go to bed you answer these five prompts about what you're grateful for good things that happened that day and what you can do to make your day even better and i just feel like this is perfect for me because it's a small commitment to make every day and all i need to do to keep myself accountable is to write in it every morning and every night before i go to bed i've also been thinking a lot about continuing my education and taking some sort of certificate program because I think I function the best when I constantly learn something new. Well, I really enjoy working as a freelance artist and I really really love that I had my own business. I know it's a privilege to have your own business but I just feel like there's so much more for me to learn especially in like the digital art and design field and I've always wanted to study art since high school but I psyched myself out because I thought you know artists don't make any money but it's been 10 years since then and I've moved to this new country where the field of art and design is actually really loved and appreciated. I just feel like it's my chance to expand my horizons and learn all the things that I've always wanted to learn when I was younger. I hope that having some coursework to do and something to look forward to weekly would help me feel more grounded and more in control of my life in like a positive way. So yeah. Today we're gonna cook this spaghetti sauce with cod roll, very exciting. So earlier 
today I drew this It Inspired Cat and I decided to turn it into a digital drawing and this is what it looks like I was trying to be more loose with my style not care too much about straight edges or perfect circles and I think it turned out great I really like that it has some qualities of like color pencil work or something like that it looks a little bit traditional and yeah that's something that I've been really into lately Hi again, it's only 3.30 p.m. but the sun is already starting to set Daylight savings and winter just makes me feel tired really easily because it gets dark so quickly So something that I've been thinking about lately is conditional love versus unconditional love And with conditional love, it implies that you need to behave or act or be a certain way in order to deserve love from someone and I've been thinking about that a lot because I feel like I experienced that as a child um, growing up and now as an adult I find it difficult to accept love from other people when I haven't done anything for them and for many months now my therapist and I have been working on like the technical stuff like healing from childhood wounds and uncovering past trauma but I wanted to bring this up with you guys because I feel like I see this pattern of me expecting to be loved under a condition reflected in my art and my creative process and the way that I interact with people who follow and support my work on Instagram and YouTube. Whenever I'm not feeling well or I fall into a rut and I'm not able to create art or make videos, I automatically think that everyone is going to hate me or be mad at me, which makes no sense at all when you think about it. I'm so used to having love given to me and then taken away from me when I'm not doing enough to deserve that love that sometimes I feel like if I don't post enough on Instagram then everyone is just gonna leave me and it is so crazy that this idea of conditional love is like what fundamentally makes me an anxious person is that I feel the need to do and serve and take care of other people and if I am not doing it then I don't deserve love and that's not true that's a thought pattern that I am working really really hard to break free from because it shouldn't be that way my friends are not gonna leave me just because I am not doing something for them I need to remember that, I need to inject it into my head that people are not gonna stop loving you just because you stop serving them and I don't know, it's just really mind-blowing that that's the way I think naturally it's also a little sad for me to realize that and I feel really really bad for younger me for not knowing this sooner because it could have saved her like years of pain <laughs> in my last video, someone left a comment saying that I talk about mental health thingies too much and that other studio vloggers don't do this and at first I was so tempted to apologize and say sorry for being vulnerable and opening up and bringing negative feelings into my channel but when I think about it, there's nothing for me to apologize for this is where I am in my life, in my healing process I am such a strong advocate for speaking up about mental health because I come from a country where mental health is so stigmatized and so many people are unhappy because they're unable to speak up or reach out and get professional help and that's why I constantly share my stories on here I've been listening to Emma Chamberlain's podcast on Spotify for a while now and in one of them, she talks about how people like talking about mental health when the person talking about it has healed has gone through the difficulties in their life has come out on the other side and is ready to share their story but people who are in the difficult part people who are in the middle of their healing process and are struggling just as much as anyone else those people aren't appreciated as much and that's something that I would like to change too I know I'm just a small channel and a lot of people have stopped watching my content since I closed down my shop but whenever I have my little mental health corners in my videos I always get a bunch of comments from you guys saying that you relate to what I'm saying and that makes me feel so good about what I'm doing and I also feel really great that you guys can find each other in the comments and find someone else who struggles the same way that you do Hiểu mấy? Lo cũng kìm vậy ạ Tàu quá bạc Hồ quá the sun is setting My body thinks it's hungry like the daylight savings is making me hungry earlier and it's also making me get a little sad because it's dark I was talking on camera today about like conditional love versus unconditional love Yes We love Mosa unconditionally Yes Even if she poop on the bed, we still love her Yes, we do 
Even if she spilled food, we still love her. Sweet. <laughs> I love you unconditionally. I love you unconditionally too. <laughs> you jumped up on my office chair today. Mm -hmm. Mosa said it's a bones day. It's a bones day for Mosa too. 